What's up guys, Chris here from Signs of Life, back again with another video. In today's video, we're gonna talk about ambient arrangements. Now, after arranging hundreds of ambient tracks, this is a topic that I feel comfortable speaking about. It's also near and dear to my heart as this is something that I struggled with early on, and I'm here to show you some of those tricks that I learned along the way. I remember back in the early 2000s when I would make these electronic music jams that were only eight to 16 bars long, and that's as far as they would go. It wasn't until 2012 when I finally sat down and said, okay, I'm gonna start a track and finish the track and I'm not going to stop until it's done. That's when I really got into the art of arranging for ambient music. And we're gonna talk about that in this video. Spoiler alert, now in today's video, we are going to use the Anomaly demo. I've been talking about Anomaly for Vital for months and the time is finally here. Now that all this live show stuff is taken care of, I can finally sit down, finish the sound set, and we're gonna see the release of Anomaly, hopefully, if everything goes right, by next week. As always, smash that like button on the way in and subscribe to the channel if you guys feel called to do so. With that being said, let's dive in. All right, so here we are in Ableton Live 11. Now, I've been working on this demo all week, and my apologies to anyone who's been waiting for more tutorials or full track walkthroughs. Uh, these type of things, they take a lot of my focus and attention. So we'll get back to our regular upload schedule very shortly. In the meantime, let's talk about this arrangement. This is a kind of a, a different animal when it comes to ambient arrangements. These demos are arranged, I arrange them personally in different sections, right? So this song in particular goes through three different tempo changes and key changes, okay? So keep that in mind. We're gonna hear some really serious drops uh, in the middle of it, which indicate it's just a different section of the song and it flows on to the next. And the point of these demos is not to fully make a, a dynamic arrangement that a start to finish is the same idea. I'm trying to showcase different um, parts of the sound set because this is for the upcoming Anomaly sound set, which is almost done. I'm so excited for you guys to finally get your hands on it. It will be out next week, hopefully by next week. Uh, I'll keep you guys updated on materialsoundsets.bandcamp.com. All right, so that being said, one of the things that I really wanted to get across with this arrangement, showing you guys this, it's almost like looking behind the curtain of The Wizard of Oz, is I really wanna sense, give you guys a sense of that drama buildup that needs to happen, all right? So I'm gonna start this off right away. We're gonna listen for about 30 seconds, and, I'm gonna and you guys can hear the sense of drama that I'm creating with the first three or four patches, all right? So the first patch is called Symphony of the Stars. It's from Anomaly, and 99.9% .9 of this is going to be from Vital and Anomaly, all right? I just wanna make that clear. Uh, the rest of it is maybe some kick drums and some hi-hats that I used uh, from outside sources, uh, but most of it is vital. All right, so here we go, I'm gonna hit play. And right away, I'm pulling you in. There's another pad. And we'll stop right around here. So you hear what it's doing, right? It's starting out with these different textures. And I like to think of these, I call this an electro riff. This is basically a square wave that uh, was being modulated inside of Vital. And I put some bunch of reverb and delay on it. Square waves, by the way, make a great electronic signal, if you guys didn't know. If you want to try to recreate the sound of electricity, use square waves, okay? So then what I did is I took those square waves, those samples, and I resampled them. I called this the B-roll, and I put them inside of uh, Replicant 2 and glitch them out, and that becomes sort of like an afterthought. These, to me, are more like intellectual touches, where you listen to something and it tickles a different part of your senses, if I use the right terminology there. Right, it's very high frequency stuff. And then a beautiful pad. This is called Network, on top of Symphony of the Stars. So I'm building it up here. We're building that sense of drama. Like where, what is this world and where is it going? And then boom, I ground you with a bass. Just a simple 
four bar. Boom, that's Earth Room. And the opening sequence is from Starfield. Patch off Anomaly. All right, so before this happens, I just wanna make it clear that this is how arrangements start to build up. You, you draw the listener into your world and then you keep their attention. And by keeping their attention, every second of the music must mean something. Right. So what I'm trying to do with this demo is give you guys a sense of like what this sound set is all about. But not only that, the world that I'm creating, I'm building it track by track. OK. And sound by sound uh, using careful sound design choices. And of course, the quality of the sound set, which is anomaly. I'm layering this sequence on top. This is called breaking through. Again, those higher uh, replicant two glitches are back. So you don't forget about them. And then up here at bar 56, we're gonna experience our first big drop. And it's gonna break out into something totally different, so. Another couple rounds with the electro glitches. And now it falls off a cliff. That was sort of an important point there was that arrangement bit where I built it all up and then whew, I let you go and then all of a sudden we're back, back into the mix, right? Simple whoosh, boom sample here, and the bass line kicked in. This is Moldavite. By the way, side chained uh, to the kick drum, okay? That's very important. If you guys don't know how to use side chaining, I highly recommend um, looking it up. It brings out the best qualities in both the bass and the kick, I think. As soon as I side chain something, ah, oh, it sounds better. And then, okay, here's another section to build on top of that. So I've, I've set the tone. This is at 131 beats per minute. And then all of a sudden these little tiny hi-hats come in here. And listen to this. Then the hi-hat comes in and that signals a change. Boom. Right, so when you do transitional things, there's all kinds of ways that you can get into another section. All right, section by section, you can move throughout the song with just little auditory cues for your listeners to understand where you're going. And so they know, it's like a, it's like a subconscious signal for them to say, okay, change is coming. Here it is. Five, six, seven, eight. Another round of the network. We have another sequence coming in here called Another World. More pads, the whole thing is building up. Okay, so you can hear where this is going. It's all forming into this uh, crescendo, which is gonna drop out, and then we're gonna move on to section two, okay? Again, this is, if this was your own arrangement, you might think differently like, okay, maybe I'm gonna go back into a different part. Like you're, mo mostly when I, when I make one track, you can imagine all of these tracks would be spread out over the entire thing. Uh, but because this is a, a three section demo, uh, this is where we're at. All right, so here's where the next sequence starts. After we've sort of landed from the first one, I've actually changed the tempo down here in the master tempo lane. I'll show you the automation. So you can see the tempo did change now. Now we're at 111. That's another trick for you. If you didn't know, you could change the song tempo in the master fader inside of Ableton. 
And that bass line, new beginning, starts. Transitional element. In comes the snare. Now before this next part hits, I wanted to mention this next sequence, I didn't feel like it needed a transitional element because it was so soft. And sometimes you can judge, if a, if a transitional element or an element by itself can stand on its own, you might not necessarily need to signal that it's going to start, such as this. That works well for me. We have another padding coming. This is called docking procedure. Gorgeous. Love it, okay? So you could hear how we just went from one section to another section. And like I said, if you intelligently think about the different parts of the song and where you're leading your audience, uh, each second of the audio should basically tell the story, but you don't always necessarily need to um, signal that that story is going to change. Just introduce certain things and then you'll build up this whole atmosphere and then you can take away elements as you feel like you need to, all right? Give the music space to breathe. So you can see docking procedure left and then in come the next pad. Love it, all right. So now let's talk about the final section, all right? So here comes the final push. There's our master tempo on the move. Now we're at 136. Right, so you, you saw how quickly that happened. All within a matter of 45 seconds, we were in one spot. The kick began, but also began with the bass. That pad buildup led into the sequence. Let's fade this in here. And then the whoosh signaled that the sequence was going to start. Very good. So I think the point was made that if you think about the entire arrangement. Now, if you imagine each one of these sections as little bite-sized tracks, if you think about the entire arrangement, where do you want to go and how are you going to get there? Like I said, give each element space to breathe on its own and then allow them to live within one another. That's very important. We're just talking about arrangements here, not mixing, just arrangements. Especially in ambient music or up-tempo, techno, whatever you want to call this, Sibian. Fast forward about 10 seconds here. We're gonna to get to the end. I'm gonna show you how I wrap it up. Okay, you heard that little hi-hat? Time to go. Baseline changes. This is what I call the final push or the final 
crescendo into the end. I could probably lower that pad noise. Yeah, that could probably come down. So let's let's just do that on the fly. So we're gonna lower that at that point. Give that other pad a space. That's good. Maybe that was like a four or five dB move there. Seven. And now we're coming back down from orbit. Things are starting to tail off. Baseline is going to fade out. And we're seeing the inner atmosphere now. So you see, with just a couple simple ideas and careful considerations, you can make great arrangements. You just have to push it as far as it can go. I hope this video has been helpful for you. If you guys have any tips or tricks about arrangements, have any thoughts of your own, make sure to leave those in the comment section down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Signs of Life, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.